Okay, uh, let's get started with the next session. So the first talk in this session will be by uh, Yuta Shido from University of Tokyo, uh, who will be telling us about cavity QED control of quantum materials. We're looking forward to your talk. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, giving me this great opportunity uh, to present our recent results. So uh, I'm Yuta Shida from the University of Tokyo. Um, in this talk, I'd like to talk about the possibility of using the cavity confinement to uh, control the materials, uh, sorry, properties of quantum materials. So uh, let me first start from a very brief overview about the uh, physics of light matter interaction. So uh, probably the simplest way to study the light matter interaction is to think about uh, this hypo setup. So uh, suppose that we have some simple quantum system like a single qubit and then uh, inter consider its interaction with the classical coherent light. And this is, of course, the prototypical setup uh, considered in, uh, for example, the context of laser physics. And so another way uh, to study the physics of light matter interaction is to think about the coupling to the quantum electromagnetic field. So uh, for example, in the field of cavity or circuit QED, uh, the basic idea is to confine the quantized electromagnetic environment into the small box uh, called cavity. And this confinement allows one to effectively enhance the uh, coupling strength between matter and light. And in this way, uh, one can even achieve the uh, strong coupling, uh, even in the absence of external driving. Um, so it is natural to uh, extend this idea to the uh, many body regime. So uh, for example, uh, one can of course uh, use the classical light to uh, periodically drive a mini body system and study its uh, interesting uh, transient dynamic. And this is uh, nicely summarized by uh, the beautiful talks by uh, Takashi and James. And so what I like to uh, discuss here is uh, the rather decent uh, idea of the so-called cavity QED material. So here the basic idea is to confine uh, some many body system into the uh, cavity. And uh, so hopefully, uh, uh, so uh, we may be able to uh, control material properties uh, without external driving. So indeed, uh, there have been uh, significant developments uh, in achieving such strong, strong light matter coupling in the absence of uh, driving. Um, for example, in the terahertz uh, frequency regime, uh, the, uh, there is an experiment which uses the uh, plasmonic cavity and uh, confined to the material into the, this cavity and achieve the ultrasound coupling with the uh, terahertz electromagnetic environment. And so th there is a recent uh, uh, experiment here, uh, which uh, observes some non-trivial uh, influence of the cavity confinement on the uh, quantum hole transport. And naturally, uh, these uh, interesting experimental developments uh, motivate a number of uh, theoretical proposals. And on another front, uh, the ultrasound coupling has been also achieved in the microwave region, uh, for example, in the field of circuit QED. So uh, basically, so in this uh, field, uh, so uh, uh, system is like this. So uh, there is a Josephson junction, which is coupled to the uh, microwave electromagnetic environment. Um, so despite these uh, recent developments, uh, so comprehensive understanding of uh, this type of uh, cavity QED material is still lacking. So um, there are several uh, important open questions like uh, what is the theoretical approach to uh, analyzing these ultrasound coupling regimes um, or uh, can we use a cavity confinement to co control correlated phases? So uh, the main goal of uh, this talk is to address these uh, questions. And these studies have been done in collaboration with uh, these people. So Kanta Masuki is a grad student in my group. And uh, Hiroichi Sudo is a grad student, uh, now a grad student in uh, Takashi's group. And Masaki Oshika from ISSP, uh, Eugene Demla and Atachi Mamoru from uh, ETH and Takeo Yokota from Niken. So uh, as I mentioned, the uh, strong light matter couplings uh, has been achieved and because these are the new parameter regimes, so they naturally lead to the uh, new theoretical challenges and also the breakdown of uh, conventional descriptions. So let me illustrate uh, this 
uh, uh, difficulty by uh, considering a very simple example in cavity QED, uh, namely the quantum Rabi model. So suppose that we have a single electric dipole coupled to a single uh, cavity mode. And so let, let's model uh, this electric dipole as a charged a quantum particle trapped in an effective double wave potential. So our starting point is uh, uh, this simple uh, cavity QED Hamiltonian in the Coulomb gauge. So the first term is uh, uh, just the minimum coupling term. Uh, B is the effective double wave potential, and this is just cavity photon. And we can just uh, first use the uh, simple Bogoliubov transformation to diagonalize the quadratic part of the, these uh, photon operators and obtain this Hamiltonian. And the common simplification uh, of this type of light matter Hamiltonian is to perform the uh, projection onto the low energy manifold, uh, typically a, a two level manifold of uh, this type of uh, um, um, energy manifold. And so after this projection, uh, which is basically the two level approximation, uh, we obtain uh, this uh, quantum Rabi model. So this uh, first term, of course, corresponds to uh, this uh, uh, matter part Hamiltonian, and this uh, corresponds to this light matter interaction. This uh, is just uh, uh, the, this type of photon. Uh, term. Okay. Uh, however, so this uh, two level approximation uh, will break down as Butler-Sun coupling. So uh, this is the uh, plot of the excitation spectra against the strength of light matter coupling. And these uh, green curves uh, correspond to the uh, exact results of the uh, original microscopic Hamiltonian without two level approximation. Uh, while these uh, lit curves correspond to the result obtained by the uh, two level approximation. And we can see that the, uh, these results uh, deviate from the exact result around the ultrason coupling regime. And technically, this originates from the uh, large matrix elements in the P A uh, light matter interaction term. Uh, and physically, this corresponds to the presence of a strong light matter entanglement in the Coulomb gauge. So uh, this is naturally called for uh, theoretical description uh, beyond these uh, standard approximation. So uh, as I just explained, so uh, in a uh, Rabi model, uh, so this type of uh, um, two-level approximation, which basically corresponds to the uh, projection onto the low energy manifold of the matter part is breaks down as with the coupling. Um, so if uh, so let, let's just think about the simplest example in cavity QED material, namely a single electron in periodic potential, which is coupled to the uh, single cavity mode. In this case, uh, the, the common simplification is to perform the uh, tight binding approximation, which basically corresponds to the projection onto the lowest energy manifold. And so uh, naturally, as expected from the experience in this quantum Rabi model uh, example, uh, this uh, type of uh, low energy uh, projection uh, also breaks down uh, at, with strong coupling in the Coulomb gauge. So we need some alternative uh, approach to uh, construct the tight binding model. And our solution to this problem is uh, actually quite simple. So let's just use the uh, uh, appropriate unitary transformation. So in the original Coulomb gauge, uh, the strong light matter coupling naturally leads to the strong light matter entanglement. But we find the uh, unitary transformation by which uh, we can transform to the flame where a uh, light and matter can be asymptotically decoupled in the strong coupling limit. So let's see the uh, concrete expression. So uh, this is the uh, concrete expression of the unitary transformation. And so, uh, it just starts from the QED Hamiltonian in the Coulomb gauge, and this can be written like this. And if we apply this unitary transformation, we obtain uh, this Hamiltonian. And now the point is that in the original Coulomb gauge, uh, the light matter coupling appears as this uh, P dot uh, A term. Um, and so naturally, so large G uh, gener generates the strong uh, entanglement between light, light and matter. But after the unitary transformation, light matter coupling uh, appears as uh, here. So uh, as a gauge field dependent shift of the electron uh, coordinate. And now the point is that, so this, uh, after the unitary transformation, the effective strength of the light matter coupling is characterized by the, this coefficient xi. 
And this xi is a, actually a non-monsense function of the bare coupling length. And this goes to zero in the strong coupling limit. So uh, this indicates that uh, light matter, uh, light and matter can be asymptotically decoupled in this limit. So uh, let's now uh, apply this. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so this is just for the sake of simplicity, uh, I consider the 1D, but this can be, to be 1D. It doesn't have to be 1D. Uh, right. So it, it can be generalized to uh, a higher dimension. And actually, the, this example is in 2D. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. So let's now just apply this unitary transmission to the, uh, uh, um, for, for the purpose of constructing the uh, tight binding model. So, um, so, uh, so this can be uh, developed in a general way, but let's just focus on the uh, uh, example of a 2D electron in periodic potential, which is coupled to the circularly polarized cavity mode. So uh, the, uh, our study point is uh, this uh, light matter Hamiltonian in the Coulomb gauge. And so common theoretical approaches to uh, analyze uh, this system, uh, uh, the uh, pile substitution or minimally coupled, coupled uh, elliptic Hamiltonian. But uh, we will shortly see that uh, these uh, conventional de descriptions, uh, so th these are fine in perturbative regimes, but uh, these will fail uh, in general in strong coupling regimes. So now, uh, so we try to uh, apply this unitary transformation. So uh, as I said, after the unitary transformation, uh, it is a good approximation to uh, 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 approximate the uh, total wave function as a product state between uh, matter and a photon part because of the asymptotic decoupling. And so, because we are interested in low energy manifold, so uh, we can, uh, so in that case, we can just project the photon part to the uh, photon vacuum. So uh, we en end up with uh, this uh, electron only uh, Hamiltonian after this projection. And so, uh, although this uh, only includes the electron uh, degrees of freedom, Light, uh, the effect of light matter coupling appears as the renormalization of the effective mass and also the renormalization of uh, these uh, potential. And so because this is just the uh, electron only model, we can follow the uh, usual procedure to construct the tight binding Hamiltonian. And now uh, let's just uh, focus on this uh, iconic example of the uh, honeycomb potential with a circular polarized cavity mode. Uh, of course, this uh, will be the uh, uh, cavity analog of the uh, uh, what has been originally discussed by uh, Oka and Aoki, and also the, uh, explained by the beautiful talk by James. Um, so, uh, so without uh, light matter coupling, uh, of course, uh, if we have honeycomb potential, we have uh, this uh, gapless um, um, energy bands, and if we include the uh, Inversion symmetry breaking, uh, these uh, bands are trivially gap. And uh, on the other hand, if we include the light matter coupling uh, because of the this, uh, circular polarization, this will lead to the time reverse symmetry breaking, and this will lead to the Chang inshweta. So, uh, all in all, uh, we expect this uh, kind of uh, phase diagram. Um, so, th this is a result. Um, and so this red curve uh, corresponds to the uh, result obtained from the uh, tight binding model constructed after the unitary transformation. And we can see that uh, uh, this uh, agrees well uh, with the, uh, this uh, exact result represented by the blue curve. Uh, but this uh, conventional description uh, will fail in around uh, these strong, uh, ultra strong coupling regimes. And there's also another interesting feature in these uh, so called deep strong coupling regimes. So there is a D entrant uh, transition to the uh, trivial phase uh, here. And we can understand this uh, in a very simple manner after the unitary transformation because of the, uh, this uh, non monotonic uh, dependence of the effective coupling state. Okay, so, uh, so far we uh, consider the rather simple case uh, in which there is only a single uh, electromagnetic mode, but uh, we can easily generalize the whole formalism to the case of uh, multi-mode QED Hamiltonian. Um, I'd like to uh, 
um, uh, discuss uh, one application of uh, this formalism uh, to the this, uh, dispersive quantum phase transition. So, as you may know, uh, the, this so called digitally shunted Josephson junction. This is the uh, iconic model to study a quantum dissipation originally uh, proposed by Carrede and Leggett. And basically, uh, this model can be, uh, 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 this system can be modeled uh, as follows. So there's a, a Josephson junction coupled with a, a long waveguide uh, with the impedance R. And it's microscopic Hamiltonian can be written like this. And this uh, phi is a Josephson junction phase and N is its uh, conjugate variable. And so uh, if we look at this Hamiltonian, so this actually precisely takes the same form as in the cavity QD Hamiltonian in the Coulomb gauge. So I shall call uh, this Hamiltonian as a Coulomb gauge Hamiltonian. And so uh, basically this phi and N plays a role of position and momentum uh, uh, of the uh, uh, particle. And this NR basically plays the role of a uh, vector potential and alpha is the effective uh, coupling strength. And it is given by uh, this. And this term corresponds to the microwave uh, uh, environment. And it uh, is characterized by the frequency cutoff uh, W. And here we are interested in the so-called wideband uh, condition uh, where the charging energy EC and Josephson energy EJ are much smaller than the, uh, this cutoff W because uh, this is uh, the, basically the experimentally relevant situation. So despite the simplicity of this model, uh, for some reason, uh, there's some controversy regarding the uh, quantum phase transition in, about the ground state of uh, this Hamiltonian. So uh, perturbative uh, RG analysis uh, clearly suggests the presence of quantum phase transition at alpha is equal to one. Yet, uh, for some reason, uh, so far there is no concrete experiment, experiment evidence. So uh, we uh, revisit this problem by using the non-perturbative analysis. So uh, our approach is to uh, first use the Wilson numerical RG uh, to this Hamiltonian by using the unitary transformation. So uh, in NRG, we need certain uh, level truncations. And so in the original Coulomb gauge, uh, as I said, so this, this type of level truncations uh, cannot be justified in general. So we first uh, try to uh, use a unitary transformation. Uh, in this case, uh, we can uh, show that the Joseph conjunction can be exactly decoupled. So we end up with uh, this uh, purely bosonic uh, uh, theory. And so this HTLL is just a Tomonaga Latin dialect Hamiltonian. And this uh, F nu is the uh, envelope function with the uh, 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 length, localization length, uh, which is characterized by, by the, this uh, parameter nu. And nu is defined uh, here. And now, a previous uh, understanding goes as follows. So if we perform scaling analysis, uh, scaling dimension of uh, this variable uh, indicates that uh, this uh, is irrelevant in RG sense. So uh, we may assume the validity of uh, taking this new to zero. And if so, uh, we can, uh, if so, uh, in this limit, this envelope function is just uh, a, a delta function. So we can simplify this Hamiltonian to uh, this uh, uh, boundary sign gondo model. And the ground state properties of this boundary sign order model uh, is very well established. So uh, we can use perturbative RG and duality argument to uh, conclude that uh, uh, its uh, ground state phase diagram is like this. So there is a vertical phase boundary at alpha is equal to one. Okay, uh, so far so good. But so there's one subtlety in this argument. Uh, so that is, so we, we are interested in uh, this code so-called a wideband condition, meaning that this uh, variable nu uh, actually takes a, a very large value at the uh, initial stage of RG flow. So uh, maybe we need to take into account this uh, non-perturbative non uh, uh, effect at UV scale, and this might uh, uh, lead to the qualitative change of the uh, uh, result. And uh, indeed, uh, we find that this is uh, 
the case. So uh, we perform the non perturbative uh, two types of non perturbative RG analysis. Uh, one is the numerical RG, and the other is the functional RG. And the results are, are rather surprising. So uh, if we include uh, this uh, new term uh, uh, at the uh, UV scale, uh, so uh, we see that this initiator phase is actually uh, uh, suppressed to this uh, deep charging, charging regime. And so uh, we can understand the origin of uh, this uh, qualitative difference from uh, this uh, RG flow in the uh, FRG analysis. So uh, this vertical uh, line corresponds to the Josephson energy and the uh, horizontal line corresponds to the, basically the variable mu. And so if we look at this small new regime, which corresponds to the part of the regime, so the, this just uh, reproduced the uh, uh, conventional results uh, as expected. But if we look at the uh, large new regime uh, here, for example, so uh, there is a, a non-monotonic RG flow uh, here and the system actually uh, flows to different fixed points uh, here. So in this sense, uh, this variable nu uh, is uh, dangerously irrelevant in the sense that it is irrelevant in perturbative regime, but it can be relevant in non perturbative regime. And so in our paper, we propose to uh, use long height impedance uh, superconducting waveguide realized by a, a disk loop uh, as, uh, as a possible way uh, to uh, experimentally test uh, our results. And I'd like to only mention that uh, recently the, this uh, same group reports um, observation of the, the dissipative quantum phase transition uh, in this spectrum. Okay, so uh, what I have just uh, discussed is about the superconducting circuit QED. And this is in microwave region. And in this uh, region, uh, the ultra strong coupling has been achieved at the single electron level, meaning that uh, this can be achieved without uh, collective enhancement. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it is a terahertz uh, frequency regime in which the, uh, that is relevant to uh, many of material excitation. However, so far, the, uh, in this uh, terahertz frequency regime, the ultra strong coupling has been achieved uh, only with the help of uh, uh, so called collective enhancement. But on the other hand, uh, the theoretical proposal uh, typically assumes the uh, presence of a uh, single electron ultrasound coupling. So uh, there is an obvious gap between uh, experiment and theory. So, uh, so one of the important questions in the field of uh, cavity QED material is that, is it really feasible to uh, uh, create the cavity that can attain the single electron ultrasound coupling at terahertz frequency? This is the question uh, we would like to ask. And if we think about the a very simple uh, fabri pedal cavity, uh, we can immediately see that uh, this is impossible because uh, this fabri pedal cavity basically confines a purely photonic transfer modes. And if we uh, uh, consider the uh, coupling strength, uh, so this is basically limited by uh, this factor. And here, alpha is the fine structure constant. And and um, so this wavelength lambda is uh, limited by the mode volume in the fabric petrol cavity. So uh, this naturally leads to the, uh, uh, around the upper limit around this value. But uh, we know that uh, uh, such limit can be uh, overcome by uh, utilizing the hybridization with matter excitations, because in this case, the uh, wavelength lambda and the mode volume B can be uh, essentially chosen uh, independently. So uh, for instance, we know that in circuit QED, uh, so this uses the large kinetic in inductance to achieve the ultra strong coupling in uh, microwave regime. So uh, in this case, uh, the size of circuit is typically uh, much less than the actual wavelength. So following uh, this line of ideas, uh, we propose to uh, realize a terahertz cavity to achieve the single electron ultrasound coupling by using the uh, polar Handelbar's crystals like the uh, HPN. So the peculiar feature of HPN is that it has a crystal anisotropy. So it has uh, two types of uh, optical quantum frequencies. One is in the out of plane direction and the other is in the in plane direction. 
um, accordingly, so HBN has uh, two types of uh, in um, out of plane dielectric functions. And here I plot this dielectric function as a function of the frequency. And we can see that, uh, so there are uh, frequency regimes where uh, these two dielectric functions have the opposite sign. And in this frequency regime, the hybridized excitations of uh, these phonons and photons can ex exhibit the uh, so-called hyperbolic dispersion here. So here, uh, uh, the point is that this uh, EZ and EP have uh, opposite sign. So uh, these two terms uh, can almost uh, cancel with each other. So this allows us to uh, realize the large Q and kappa while keeping the frequency omega low. So, so this indicates the possibility of uh, uh, tightly confining the field, but uh, keeping the uh, low frequency. And in particular, this will uh, allow uh, us to uh, achieve the nano scale field confinement at terahertz frequencies under certain conditions. And here I uh, like to just show the uh, plot, uh, result of the, uh, this prototypical example of lambda polaritone, uh, which is basically the hybridized excitation of the uh, cyclotron excitation of a single electron and this uh, hyperbolic phonon polariton. And these are the uh, theoretically obtained uh, uh, results of the magneto, magneto absorption spectrum uh, in this setup. And we can see that uh, when the cavity thickness uh, becomes a uh, order of a few nanometers, uh, there emerges the light, large anti crossings, uh, which is the hallmark of a uh, deep or ultra strong coupling. So the natural question is that uh, so could we use <coughs> this uh, terahertz uh, HPN cavity for the purpose of controlling uh, control correlated phases in, for example, the uh, more materials? So uh, to address this question, uh, we consider the case of a twisted EMD heterobarrier provided by the HPN cavity and consider the situation in which electrons uh, near the valence band maxima are coupled to the uh, electromagnetic field of the hyperbolic phonon polaritons. So uh, this is uh, our standard point. So here, this is the uh, minimum coupled uh, term and this delta is a moral potential. And this corresponds to the uh, bosonic excitation in the cavity, and this corresponds to Coulomb interaction. And then we uh, define the coupling strength by uh, this dimensionless uh, quantity, the ratio between GQ and omega Q. And here GQ is the single electron uh, coupling strength to the uh, electromagnetic mode uh, with the wave vector Q. And so this is the typical band dispersion of the, uh, this uh, twisted header barrier. So uh, there is a uh, nearly flat band here, and we consider the situation in which uh, this band is partially filled, uh, but the uh, other bands are fully occupied. And then uh, we uh, include the cavity confinement effect by uh, uh, performing the simple perturbed analysis with respect to eta. So, uh, so this is a, a, a result uh, obtained by uh, such analysis. So, uh, uh, so this basically describes the effective Hamiltonian of the uh, nearly flat band electron in the cavity. Um, so the uh, leading contribution of the uh, cavity confinement is uh, this uh, denormalization of the single, to single electron energy. And we characterize this as the, uh, by the coefficient xi k. And this xi k, uh, uh, has the two contributions from the intra or interband uh, processes. But the latter, we find that the uh, latter is uh, uh, quite dominant. And this can be uh, directly related to the uh, tensor value connection. So uh, th this cavity renormalization has a uh, uh, geometry uh, origin in this sense. And uh, a key feature of uh, this model can be understood from the simple two band model calculation here. And here W is the moral potential and VF is the uh, Fermi, Fermi velocity at the edge of the uh, moral brilliant zone. Um, so th there are two points I'd like to highlight here. So our uh, first one uh, is that so this uh, band dispersion E and a uh, cavity renormalization ZK. So these have the opposite uh, dispersions. And we will uh, shortly see that uh, this will induce 
allow one to uh, highly, uh, so th this allow for the high tunability of the electron hopping amplitude. And second thing is that uh, so tuning is Fermi velocity BF, uh, which can be possible by uh, changing the twist angle. So uh, one can actually uh, uh, control the localization property of uh, this Fuzai K in the momentum space. And ideally, uh, uh, choosing an uh, appropriate twist angle, uh, one can tightly localize the Fuzai K, the K space uh, in this way. And this will lead to the uh, uh, long range uh, hopping in real space. So uh, this is the uh, uh, effective model uh, uh, we obtained uh, in the real space. So uh, this is just a uh, uh, hopping uh, terms and this is full interaction term. And this uh, uh, hopping parameters can be obtained by uh, just performing the Fourier transform of the uh, uh, this uh, previous uh, um, kinetic energy. <coughs> and so here uh, we can see that the, um, so this uh, corresponds to the, this one. And so as I said, uh, the K can be uh, localized in the K space. So if we fully transform this term, this will naturally lead to the uh, cavity maybe a long range hopping. And due to the presence of uh, this term, uh, so we will uh, have the uh, long range coupling in also the uh, effective Heisenberg model. So here uh, we consider the half feeding and strong uh, U limit and uh, uh, we further simplify this Hamiltonian to the, this uh, anti Fermani uh, Heisenberg model. And these are uh, spin coupling JN uh, given by uh, this way. And now uh, the point is that so um, this hoping amplitude TI and a spin interaction uh, JI can be uh, controlled uh, by changing the coupling strength theta. And this uh, uh, control uh, can be made possible by uh, simply changing the uh, thickness of the HPN layer. And now, uh, as I said, uh, because E and uh, Z have the opposite dispersions, so this E childa and Z childa have the uh, opposite sign. So, uh, so uh, tuning the value of eta so at certain point, uh, J1 uh, or T1 can actually vanish. As uh, plotted here. So uh, this uh, allows the uh, uh, this uh, allows the large value of uh, J2 over J1 or J3 over J1. So uh, all in all, uh, these uh, uh, aspects will uh, allow for the high tunability of the spin couplings by using the cavity confinement. Yes, please. Is there any reason why you can truncate the interaction up to the third neighbor? Uh, Direction? Well, uh, there's uh, uh, so it's it's not so obvious, but uh, mm. uh, so I guess this depends on the choice of material. But at least uh, we check that uh, our choice of uh, these materials, um, at least the uh, higher order terms like J4, J5, J6, they are uh, smaller than J3, at least by an order of magnitude. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, at least for these materials, we believe that uh, it is sufficient to include up to this. Okay. okay uh, so uh, we now uh, simplify the uh, model to uh, this uh, uh, long, rather long range interacting uh, anti ferromagnetic uh, triangular Heisenberg model. And actually, the equilibrium properties of uh, this uh, uh, spin model have been uh, extensively analyzed recently in many of uh, these studies by, uh, for example, using the DMRG techniques. And so uh, th there's uh, basically a good knowledge about the phase, uh, ground state phase diagrams. So uh, we can just combine these uh, previous results with the uh, high tunability of uh, these spin coupling by uh, changing the uh, twist angle and this uh, light matter coupling strength. So basically this is the uh, obtained uh, phase diagram of the, uh, this, uh, our proposed cavity moale material. 
Um, first, uh, we see that so without light matter coupling, uh, there's only a, a, a magnetically ordered uh, ground state. But uh, we see that with uh, a light matter interaction, so a variety of magnetic ground state uh, can be realized. And even, uh, so one may even realize the candidate quantum spin liquid, uh, which is placed in this uh, intermediate region. Okay, uh, so in summary, I hope uh, I convinced you that the uh, cavity confinement uh, holds a promise for uh, controlling quantum phases in the uh, absence of external driving. And so first we constructed the tight binding model for cavity QD materials and used it to uh, analyze the very phase and topology in uh, ultrason coupling regimes. And second, we also uh, revisited the uh, issue regarding the dispersive quantum phase transition and uh, our non-partial analysis suggests that the uh, dispartive transition is possible, but uh, only in a deep charging regime. And finally, we also propose a way, a possible way to attain the uh, terahertz ultrason coupling by using the uh, HPN cavity. And we show that uh, it uh, could be uh, used to control magnetic translation in more materials. So uh, that's all, thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Yuto. We have time for some questions. Oh, there's, there's many. Um, so I had two questions. On the QPT part, is it also BKT in your analysis? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, which What's the nature of the transition in the uh, nature of dissipative the, uh, transition? No, 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 the dissipative uh, phase transition. Oh, I see. Well, the cosine, the nonlinearity. I mean, if it's a two level system, it'd just be the PKT transition. I'm just wondering if you can, the universality class um, is affected by the nonlinearity. Yeah, it, it could be. So we, we didn't check the uh, uh, carefully about the so nature of this critical point. Okay. Um, it could be, but um, it's not. So obvious. So this, this is rather unusual fixed point of this boundary phase theory because uh, this uh, variable nu uh, corresponds to the uh, so there's a boundary term here. Uh -huh. and boundary has some localization length, and in this uh, in this uh, so coupling limit, you actually diverges. So it's, it's um, yeah, so uh, honestly, we, we don't have a, a good intuition. Uh, the NRG uh, would tell you. You did NRG, right? As the answer within. Uh, sorry. Is it NRG, numerical linearization group? You have NRG slide. NRG, FRG. A NRG? I'm just looking at your slide. Uh -huh. It says NRG. Mm -hmm. so, so that has the answer, doesn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, so, um, Just an, I mean, yeah, 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 but, uh, so, so, uh, so, uh, honestly, we, we didn't check carefully about that. That's fine. Detail. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, the okay. second question was on the, your Moray materials. Uh, you, uh -huh. you mentioned a specific, you know, MOT2 on WSC2. Is that exactly what you're thinking about? Or is that just a particular example? Uh, cause that has a lattice mismatch. And it seems like you're ignoring the last mismatch uh, the formalism. Which part? Uh, so, I mean, you have a WSE2, MOSE2. Is that just a example or uh, like those don't have the same lattice constant, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, well, a lattice mismatch and a twist. And so you don't even have to twist it. You could uh, be more A without a twist. I'm just asking if you ignored the lattice mismatch. Well, uh, so this is just uh, one concrete example. Uh, so, 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 uh, in so our, yeah, in our preprint, uh, so we uh, consider sort of some general theory, how we can uh, construct the general effective theory for cavity model materials. So yeah, if you're interested, you can just look at the okay, preprint. Just a comment, the Heisenberg model likely doesn't have the SU2. It probably has a broken down to U1. Right, probably right, the right, yeah. In it. yeah.
I have a question about the, uh, so this is a fermion coupled to bosons, and it seems that you're kind of tracing out the bosons. Mm -hmm. So like in a very general setup, uh, I would imagine that you get some interaction mediated by the bosons, but it seems that in your examples, the tight binding model, basically the effect of the bosons is to renormalize your hopping and the, those uh, like a one body properties. You also have some strange uh, interaction terms. So, um, yeah, so thank you for a uh, good question. So, um, so within our formalism so far, so as you said, uh, uh, the cavity effect is just a uh, renormalized single electron energy, and this is basically the cavity made it long with hopping. And uh, I believe that what you have uh, the effect uh, you implied can be included by uh, generalizing our analysis to non partable regime. Um, so, um, so here, uh, our hope is to uh, our this rather simple part of it analysis capture the um, essential future of uh, this system. But uh, so far, so our analysis is restricted to the second order of uh, this particular coupling length. And uh, yeah, so uh, we, we uh, we cannot say something concrete at this stage until we perform the no part of analysis, but I expect that the uh, interesting uh, interaction effect could be possible uh, in the higher order. Okay, we have time for one more question, uh, but we're also gonna switch over to the next presentation uh, during this question. Uh, I had a question about your dis dissipative Josephson junction. Mm -hmm. uh, can you go to the slide where you introduced that? Oh, this one. Right. So, are you are you treating the the number fluctuations quantum mechanically, but the phase fluctuations classically? Oh, oh, oh. So uh, these are just conjugate variable. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, so so what yeah. are you doing about phi? Sorry? How are you treating phi? Phi. Oh, uh, we just treat this as a, a position, uh, uh, and, uh, which is based on the minus infinity to infinity. Yes, so but are you treating it quantum mechanically or? Well, uh, I see. So, uh, but, uh, so at least in this example, we can show that there's no difference between these, these treatments, I, you mean? Phi in the compact phase or extinct phase? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I, yeah. I'm asking if, if phi is treated quantum mechanically or not. Like, so it's a. I'm just asking. You've got hats on the end, but you don't have hats on the phi. Oh, I, I see. I see. So it's just these a, are two conjugate variables, phi, phi and n. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you have problems with the fact that phi is not a Hermitian operator. Oh, uh, we don't have, a, at least in this example, uh, we can show that, yeah. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. So uh, there's no difference between uh, the treatment uh, of uh, either phi in the compact phase or extended phase, at least for this system. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's thank you, Joe. Yeah.